Okay, I'd like to start out by that, uh, showing that uh, I'd like to dedicate this postcard lecture to my postcard friends. And this is a, less, a, a list of all my friends. I won't read them, but they're there for you. Oh, here we go. Um, I want to start out by saying, I'd like to say that um, everything that exists, exists on a postcard so that postcards are the universe in miniature to me. Uh, postcards are like little works of art. And I create artist postcards, but I'm not a collector. So this first slide is uh, the best example of artist postcards that I, that, that, that I own. Also, the, I, I wanted just to say that uh, Delteology is the study of postcards. Um, if you want to know more about uh, the history of postcards, you need to speak with a Delteologist. This is uh, like my friend uh, Donald B. Brown, Donald, I mean, sorry, it's Donald R. Brown, who's the founder of the Institute of American Delteology in Myerstown, Pennsylvania. Donald's very knowledgeable on all things postcard. Um, but today I'm here just to talk about one category, which is artist signed postcards. And these are four of the best examples. The, uh, artist postcards are made by artists, illustrators, graphic designers, and, and sign, they sign their works of art. It's a, an illustration, they do illustrations and they're signed. They're all handmade postcards. Um, these are the best examples of those uh, artist signed postcards. Um, Alphonse Musha uh, was an Art Nouveau artist who became extremely famous by doing Sarah Barnhart on a poster. You can tell this particular card was very expensive and uh, it was done in 1900 and it's a second uh, series that he did on uh, the Zodiac. I purchased this card and then um, there was another card here, um, Bertaglia. He says he was born in 1891. He died in 1971. I could have actually met him, um, but uh, I didn't. But he uh, did mostly children and they're, art, they're like Art Deco. And I especially like this card because it's a fantasy card of the butterfly kissing that little daisy. Oh, I just, I just love anything he does. He, he's Italian. And Musha is uh, Czech. And if you ever get a chance, you should check out um, his Slav, Slav epic that he did, which is 20 monumental canvases that are in the uh, National Museum in Prague. Wow, I had no idea what he was up to. It seems like the money that he made from his posters and his postcards he took all of that and went back to Prague and did like, I, I can't tell you, you have, to, you have to see it. Both of these two cards I got from, uh, from Edith Weber. And Edith, I, I called Edith the Queen of Art Nouveau. Um, she did an artist postcard book <clears throat> of um, Art Nouveau, Art Deco, fashion postcards. And it's a beautiful book. I mean, I, it, it's, it's really, it's a knockout. And uh, Edith, um, I always, I was always happy in the 10 cent box until I met Edith Weber. Um, Edith wore white gloves when she came to the postcard club to look at postcards. And, um, and I thought, wow, what class. And uh, she, um, would be, she would go to Vienna and Paris and go to the auctions. And uh, if there was a Musha that she wanted, one that she didn't have, she would just hold the paddle up and she would never put it down until she got the card. I was like, wow. Oh, I was, like, I was very fortunate to, to, to uh, be friends with Edith. 
Um, this other card is a, uh, from the Bernard Verdstadt, which, wait a minute, before I go there, I'm sorry, jump. I wanted to talk about this Raphael Kirshner. This was a, Kirshner, this was a card that uh, Abe Samuels gave to me. Uh, and he, he was a postcard connoisseur par excellence. I mean, the guy was really passionate about postcards. I mean, he lived for postcards. And um, everything that I know about postcards, I learned from Abe and uh, Ed Epstein. The two of those guys uh, gave me my, uh, my, formal my formal postcard education. And there's a new book out now on uh, Raphael Kirshner and his postcards. And it's a new edition. And it's by Pia and Antonia del Aquila. Um, wow, it's, a, it's an update to the, to the last book that they did. The Vernon Verstock card was something that I acquired um, just, you know, in passing. Uh, it wasn't that expensive. Those things are very expensive now. This is a, it was 1911, 1911. And the Vernon Verstock was a, was Vienna Workshop, which was um, a, collab, uh, a collaborative of artists and uh, architects and graphic designers. And then it, it started out as, as a, in the Vienna secession period, then it moved to art, or it moved to the Bauhaus and then it moved to Art Deco. It was from like 1903 to 1932. Um, I have to mention that Mr. Lauder, uh, Leonard A. Lauder is uh, the number one postcard collector and patron of the arts. <clears throat> um, he's printed, he's published three books on uh, artist postcards and um, they're extremely beautiful and well done. I, I'm so impressed. Uh, the, the first one, one of them is the art of the Japanese postcard. And the second one is the postcards of the Bernard Verstadt. And the last one was the postcard age. Um, highly recommend those books. This was a, a postcard that I made uh, back in 76. I had this crazy idea to uh, drape the Statue of Liberty, which um, I actually almost got to do. I, um, I get published in all these magazines and radio stations were calling me. Uh, so I've had my 15 minutes, don't bother me anymore. Um, I wanted to drape the Statue of Liberty in a red, white, and blue sash with silver stars and then trimmed in gold. And I had the West Point Petro Company donate the material and it went to a sailmaker, Mr. Valentine in, the, in uh, City Island to sew the thing up. And then uh, this, the thing went to the White House somehow and then it got passed over to the Secretary of the Interior. And the Secretary of the Interior said, no, that's not gonna happen. Um, so it didn't. Um, and this is the first postcard that I published commercially uh, with um, Manhattan Postcard Company. And then it was printed uh, by uh, Dexter Press. And uh, Dexter Press usually has postcards that have a deckled edge around the outside of it. And their serial numbers down at the bottom run from A to D, and it was a million cards per letter. Um, I, I spent the summer up there in the morgue, the Boast Garden morgue, uh, going through all of their cards. <clears throat> That's a whole nother story. <clears throat> but anyway, um, and then I made this silhouette of the Statue of Liberty in stamps, and I, they're kind of glowing or something. I, I, uh, there's, there's stamp art postcards and this is a, a handmade cutout uh, stamp card, stamp art card. Oh, and then this, uh, this was the first um, article that I had in uh, New York Magazine. <clears throat> it was called Trade-Offs and it was printed by, uh, or Dorothy Cyberling wrote it up and she worked for the Times and then she got a job over here and uh, she, uh, I showed her my cards and she said, you know, she wanted me to leave them and I said, no, I really can't do that. And she's no legal, Michael. So I finally 
I, I left them and then I came back a week later and uh, a couple of weeks later, it was on the rack. And one of the things that she said to me was that, you know, a lot of people talk about doing this kind of thing, but she said, Michael, you did it. And so, so I guess that was the reason why she printed it up. I, I don't know if it was my idea that, I think maybe I said that the World Trade Center stuck out like sore thumbs. And since she wrote that up, um, the next card you'll see will be the, the card that I gave to, to, to Dorothy Cyberman. <clears throat> There's like, uh, I tried to put the, the, the World Trade Center in the Grand Canyon. The Magnitude Manor is an idea that I had, that I got from Bran Kush, my favorite sculptor, one of my favorite sculptors. Um, he did a, um, a sculpture of two pieces, two figures together with one eye, one mouth, and one lips. And it was called um, The Kiss. And he had done that in 1911. And I think what he was trying to do is make two things become one thing. And so I thought, can I do that with the trade towers as two things, can I make them one thing? And I thought, oh, you know, put the arch over the top. And then the tilting one, that stone hinge or steel hinge, I actually had done that in butter. I was thinking of them as butter sticks. And the boogie woogie is uh, Pete Modrian and is one of my all time favorite artists. His favorite word was evolution. I thought, or I was like, wow, evolution? Well, it's a lot of times I'd look down to the World Trade Center and they look like they're wearing a sweater or like had mittens on or something. And so I thought, you know, put them in a, you know, in a pair of mittens, like with just thumbs. And I gave this card to uh, Dorothy Cyber. I'll never see it again. But, uh, <clears throat> and then this, these two cards, um, this was the first artist postcard show uh, in Manhattan. And it was at the drawing center in Soho. And I had done the Swimmer of Liberty um, and it sold out at the opening. So uh, Joan, da Joan K. Davidson, Joan, Joan of Art, um, asked me, uh, they, they said, I would like you to make a wiggle picture. And uh, you, what would you like? She asked, Michael, what would you like to do? And I said, well, you know, if I had a choice, I said, I'd really like to take the World Trade Center, put them between the pyramids. And when you wiggle the picture, it's standing on the surface of the moon. You can't really see that in this card, but it's a, a lenticular card, which is two pictures. Are, they're printed side by side on the bottom of the card. And then the lens, the lenticular, it reflects one side or the other when you, when you move the card. And um, Joan came up with the idea when I said that, she said, well, let's call it two in time. And I was like, oh, thank you very much. And she said, we'll print it in the 13 different languages. And they printed in all those uh, Chinese and it, the translation is really weird. It's like the clouds, the, the, the columns that sprout and grow beyond the clouds and the Japanese and uh, the Hebrew and the Russian. Uh, and she put Swahili in there. And then I put the Egyptian hieroglyphs in there. <laughs> and uh, uh, they gave me some cards. And right after I'd done this card, it, I wound up going to Egypt and working for the University of Chicago on epigraphic survey. And um, oh, you, you'll see that later. But anyway, this card, um, both of these cards, I've offered them as a gift to the Metropolitan Museum. And they're in the process of accepting them. And I, they were really happy to get them. They'll be in the drawing and print department there if you wanna go see them. Um, but the, uh, the two in time, uh, Alice Greenwell at the 9-11 Museum wanted that card and I gave her a copy of it and she put it in the 9-11 Museum and mounted it really up on a column right where your head is behind the glass. It was fantastic. I thought, wow, I was like so impressed that, that they went to the trouble to do all that. Uh, I, when I, I lived down on Cedar Street and when I, I saw the Noguchi Cube, um, I really liked it, but it had a hole in it. And I thought, it came to me, I should fill that or something. And so I came up with this idea to put a purple hot dog in this cube. And um, I actually did this, this is not Photoshopped. I actually, uh, uh, Ellen Sachs helped me to make this. Uh, it was like six foot in diameter by like 
16 foot long. There's two hot dogs in there. There's like, I had to latch them together and then blow them up inside there before we were almost arrested for trespassing on that plaza of 140 Broadway. And it was just something, you know, like a crazy idea. And Bruce was really great. Bruce took the photograph and later on, Bruce got me into Zigraph at, at MIT. Wow, what a blast that was. This postcard I did, uh, which is, uh, God, it's called play ball, and it's uh, uh, the uh, it's God throwing Adam a curveball, and uh, it's in the collection of Mr. and Mrs. Sam Ramirez. Sam was a really nice guy down on Wall Street. He had a brokerage firm, and uh, he bought that card, and he also bought paintings or painting for me, uh, which was a lifesaver. Uh, uh, really great, great guy. This was. Uh, the first postcard book I was in, which is uh, a little book by Hal Morgan. And these are three of the cards. There were four cards in there. The Swimmer of Liberty was in this book. And uh, these, these three cards. Uh, and then this was my own book of fantasy and surreal postcards, which the Dover Publishing Company published. Hayward Serker uh, wanted to do this 24 ready to mail uh, tear out postcards. And uh, wow, uh, there's a long story about that, but he, they forced me to sign a contract because they, they said that they'd spend the price of a small car on legal fees because I used postcards from other companies and stuff like that. But they managed to, when I signed it, I, 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 I all I wanted was a penny on a postcard. And, they would not do it. I said, well, what about, I said, you're printing it in, Ger you know, in, in, in England and Germany and France. I mean, you know, it's all these places. He said, oh, uh, you're, you know, don't think about that. We're just doing that for your international reputation. And I was like, um, I'm not concerned about that so much. I said, you know, I really use some cash. You know, it's like, um, yikes. Um, but anyway, it, uh, I took, the money and went to Italy. So, um, these were the cards in the book. And uh, this one, Liberty for the Ritz, and the, all the the, um, the parking meter, uh, Richard Rone Menshaw bought that card and uh, the uh, Life Preserving Liberty and Hoover for the Hookers in Times Square and the wa wooden water tank. Um, not sure who. This is all before Photoshop. These are all things that I had to scale, like find the picture for it and, and actually you know, try to make the thing. I like this, the pyramid with the, uh, with the Concord stuck in it. it uh, I, it's called Excalibur, but it also has a subtitle of Travel to the Hereafter. And these were in that book and these were in the book. I just visually like the, you know, the carved, chocolate bunnies on the mittens in Monument Valley. And uh, the uh, Jefferson's Memorial with, it, with Mount Fuji in the background. I, I just I just like looking at that kind of stuff and thinking about it. Um, the Buddha on Park Avenue, that's Park Avenue East. It was, uh, I don't have any of those cards left. I sent, sent those all out. The, this is like a pizza that blew up on Chicago and the uh, I, I, this is a Hawaii where I was, it was like a volcano. I said, you know, we shouldn't really waste that fire or something. Let's cook something or do something. And the Grand Odalesque down here by Ang, that's called Grand OPEC. There was a lot of, they were doing a lot with oil. And I just thought of that. And then this one on the, space, on the moon. Oh, and this card, this card was the first postcard show I, that, I, that I had my first one man show at Davis and Langdale Gallery. And Roy Davis, it was a blue chip gallery on Madison Avenue. And um, these were some of the, these were 16 of the cards out of all the cards that were in the show. And um, I had my first show there and uh, Roy had, um, he knew John Russell from the New York Times and John Russell wrote up the show and everything sold. I mean, it was like, I'm like what? And then I had a second show and this card is actually in color. It's a blueberry pie. Uh, I was thinking like of American pie or something. It's called American Pioneer. 
uh, it's actually a warm pie on, on the moon, uh, but he printed it in black and white. And, uh, oh, and then um, I wanted to give Roy that, that postcard of the, this postcard, which is uh, two little cupids or little putties in, in art history, they're called putties. And uh, the, uh, I filled the little space capsule. I was thinking that, you know, we're gonna have to take all the literature, you know, Shakespeare and the Bible and the Quran and all this stuff and pack it in them because, you know, we're gonna need that. And uh, this was a tiny little card. You're looking at it very blown up and seeing it in, in like I've never seen it. And uh, the title of it, I, I, was, I wanted to give this to Roy and, and Cecily, but they, 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 they wouldn't have it. They, they, they paid me for that. I did not want the money because they were so good to me. The title of it is called Misguided Love. And I don't know, I'm thinking, you know, maybe it would be nice to do something for uh, SpaceX or Blue Origin. And I have a title for it already. It's, a, uh, it's, it's like on a mission guided by God is what I think I'll call it when I, when I do it. And this postcard was made um, as a Time Inc. poster for uh, five magazines, Time, People, Money, Fortune, and Sports Illustrated, all advertised in one ad. And I had shown this to uh, Stan Kosthorn. And the first card I showed him was the one of the World Trade Center on the moon, and he didn't get it. And I said, it, uh, get into a new space, read Time Inc. And he was like, I don't get it. And so I showed him my portfolio, and I, I said, maybe I have something else. And so he looked at this, he said, oh, this is it. This is the one for play with a full deck. And so they made a poster out of it. And uh, wow, was that exciting. Uh, that's, I'll tell you about that later. Wow. Um, then uh, this was a, a postcard. I was in a show, uh, Pavel Zubak was just starting out and he has a gallery in Chelsea that's a, that's a collage gallery. He's, they sell collage. That's what he started out doing. And <clears throat> he had this show. He didn't have a gallery then. He was showing at Mary Della Hoy Gallery. And um, I had a couple of postcards in there. And Rochelle, my wife, and I were uh, standing there. And Pavel runs over and says, wow, the postcards are selling like hotcakes. And <laughs> Rochelle and I were like, what? Uh, then the Tranquility Trash, um, I published that with with portfolio, Julie and Martin Gallant. And um, I thought it was one of my ace cards. I love the high tech, there's Buzz Aldrin. I thought they should clean up after, you know, making a mess on the moon. And uh, I just like the high tech and the low tech. And they took it to Macy's and came back and said, they couldn't sell it. And I said, what? They said, people don't send people trash. And I was like, oh, right. It never occurred to me. So that one is still on the shelf. Uh, this is a, a project that I worked on, um, which was the cow parade. And they sent me a cow to, to paint. And uh, I painted this cow and dedicated it to Tim Bernard Lee's, Lee, who was the father of the web, who invented the World Wide Web in 1989. And um, so that was like, you know, the year 2000, it was like email was just coming on board and so I started, uh, I thought I covered this cow with uh, artist email addresses. So there's like uh, 56 artist emails address. And I just made those addresses up. And um, they're kind of, uh, there, there's some interesting ones in here. Like the Duchamp, I put duchampdada.com. And um, the one down, uh, I did one of them over here. Uh, it was uh, Vincent at sunflowers.com. And I was thinking, if I were doing that today, I'd probably change it to Vinny. I mean, I know he's not Italian, but uh, I, would, I may have done that. And then uh, I, I did Michelangelo at carrara.com, which uh, I was thinking we go to Carrara to get his blocks of marble in order to bring them back and carve these beautiful marbles. And then I was thinking, wow, I, 
if he had seen the, the, the blue white marble that we have hanging in space that we call earth home, I was trying to think what, wonder what he would think. And I was thinking he may, he, he may look at it and, and want to paint it, do a painting of the universe as a still light. I mean, he'd probably be inspired to see that. Um, seems that he did marbles. Uh, this was a magazine I was in very early, which was a tribute to John Lennon. It was called Top of the Rock. Um, I just uh, just liked it. It was a Ro Roenji um, rock garden in, in, in Kyoto, and I, I'd been there. And this was a two magazine covers that I was on. This was a, a book on the art of New, New York, which uh, they printed uh, six of my cards in in, in this book, uh, Seymour Quast and, and Stephen Heller. And actually, Seymour had me come over one day and make a collage for Henry Kissinger. It was a, a big 60, when Henry was 60, and I got over there in the studio and I started making, you know, pasting and we're doing all this stuff. And then he, he, we wrapped the thing up and he put me in a cab and said, Michael, take this over to the Pierre. Uh, and give it to them for, for Henry's party tonight. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. That uh, little painting up there of the Angelus is one of my favorite paintings. When I was in uh, Catholic school, uh, the nuns, it was probably the first painting I'd ever seen. It was um, right next to the convent. The, nun the nuns would go in, there was a main hallway and then there was a door. And right beside it was this sort of like old dark painting. You could already see the thing it was so dusty and dirty, but uh, I kind of remembered it. And I, I always loved that painting. I guess it's, uh, you know, influence of seeing that. Then I was in this show called Diamonds Are Forever, Artists and Writers on, ba on, on Baseball. And this, this is a very interesting story. It's probably too long to go into, so I'm gonna cut it short. They made a poster out of this car, out of this, out of the, they, they made, they used it as an announcement and then they had, they, American Express uh, flew me down to the opening in West Palm Beach and I met Luz Gersner and they decided to make a poster out of it and it traveled all around the country uh, th through American Express. Uh, these were two artist books that I made uh, with using postcards. And, and images. And these are also two artist postcards. When I was just starting out, I, wa I wasn't sure what to call what I was doing. I, I said new positions and then uh, uh, simages, I've seen simulated images or something, I don't know, this is like, you know, these are two artists, uh, or these are two postcard books that I'm in. They, they used my, some of my images. And these are artist postcard books. And this one, The World Exists to be Put on a Postcard, is very recent. It was just last summer and it was at the British Museum and they had uh, my, they had cards in there. And, and the British Museum's really, uh, they're gonna digitize all of their postcard, their artist postcards. These are artist postcards from the, from the 60s to now. It, it was great to be in that book actually. And uh, uh, I look forward to seeing the Queen's postcard collection sometime. It's at the British Museum, Queen Victoria had a, had a pretty big collection going over there. We have a pretty good collection here of um, the Burdick collection, like Jeff Burdick at the Met. Uh, he went to the Met and he put all of his postcards in it and there's like I think 500 albums that he did. And then when he finished, they said, well, we'll see you tomorrow, Mr. Burdick. And he said, no, I don't think you will. And he went back to the, uh, the Chelsea Hotel and died, unfortunately. Um, but it's a great collection. Oh, and this was just a little memorial that I did for Steve Jobs. Uh, and those were uh, forget-me-nots and the, the Apple logo. I did a little book myself. I had a little collection of forget-me-nots on postcards. And I made a little book uh, that I, that I pu published myself. And then uh, when I was teaching at a community college here, the uh, 10 of my students were killed in the World Trade Center. And so I made this little paper maquette, which is what a sculptor makes a small model 
before it's blown up. So this was my little maquette, my paper maquette for a memorial. And I just it was a, uh, something that I wanted to do. Here was another uh, project I was working on. This was like an eternal peace memorial. This was uh, something that I had done uh, for the World Trade Center site. Um, this was like an eternal flame and uh, this was granite. And then the names were around the base of, this, of the thing. I kind of worked on that for a while. And uh, then I did this, which was for the uh, people at the Pentagon. And then I did this eternal peace memorial on a grand scale. And um, on the left-hand side, that's what it looked like. It was like a fountain. The water came and went down over the edge, um, the, uh, like right here and over here. Can you see that arrow? It was uh, one of the best things I've ever done. And I donated it to the museum, actually. When I donated my uh, uh, two and time postcards, uh, they accepted this as well to have it in there because it was part of the competition. But we have in this country, like at the Met, the obelisk, uh, the, um, I think it's from Tuthmosis the third. It was my favorite Pharaoh in the Valley of the Kings. Um, it, it's falling apart. I mean, the air and the, it's, it's being eaten away. And it's Moses played around this obelisk when he was a boy. I mean, it's the oldest piece of outdoor sculpture we have in the United States, thanks to Mr. Uh, Cornelius Vanderbilt, who picked up the tab on, on building a ship and, uh, and, and getting it over here. It wasn't easy. It's 220 tons. Uh, one solid piece of granite that was cut by hand with dorite bowls, you know, Egyptians standing on either side of it, pounding down, pounding down. I mean, oh, I can't, uh, I can't, can't, can't imagine cutting that out. Uh, and then let alone owning it. I mean, we have it. Um, oh, this was another project that I was working on. Um, my Aunt Anna, Langenstein died of breast cancer. And um, it was a horrible, horrible death. And the woman was a saint. She raised me with my mother. And um, I, I was walking down the street. And I saw a can on the street and I, on the sidewalk. And so I picked it up. And I thought, what can I do with this? And it came to me. I'd read in the paper that Evelyn Lauder, Leonard Lauder's wife, had passed away from breast cancer. And I thought, oh, God, what can I do? He, he, he managed to light up the Empire State Building, Buckingham Palace. And the most beautiful thing was the, the um, Niagara Falls at night. And so I was thinking, um, why don't, it would be nice to paint a, a Coca-Cola can pink and have the Coca-Cola company donate the money, the proceeds to cure breast cancer. It would be, it would, it would happen like in, in no time. I mean, it's no, no sense in women suffering with that or men. And uh, so I came up with this idea of like doing a glitter Coca-Cola can in pink. And um, I sent the thing to Mr. Lauder and said, you know, like, can you help me with this? Cause I, you know, I, since he had done everything he could do with the lighting and everything. And I was thinking um, maybe he could do something. And so I sent him the can, I get a thing back. He sends the, Lenny sends, Lenny sends the can back and says, no can do. And I'm like, oh no. So what can I do? There was like, but I just, he's in the, you know, like perfume and I thought glitter and fashion, you know, it'd be nice to have a fashionable, uh, glitter pink Coca-Cola can, it's not gonna hurt. And they'll raise money um, and get, and I don't know, it was like the only thing I wanted out of this was a cure for cancer. That's all I want. I didn't, there was no monetary thing involved in this. I don't, I don't, I don't work that way. Um, this was the back of the can and oh, this, oh, this is like, this is a postcard that I made 
but because of, of um, America has a problem with guns. I don't, I don't understand what they, this is called. Break the gun. I think break the gun, break the habit, the addiction to guns. We've got to clean up this country. We're a civilized society. Um, you know, the people I admire are like Mother Teresa, the Dalai Lama, uh, Pope Francis. I mean, these are real people that um, I admire. And the Dalai Lama says that you really, it, it, it's not good to take a person's life because it won't be long before they come to take yours. And I'm like, that, that, that says it for me. And then the Republicans think that, you know, like, you know, if Jesus had a gun, he'd be alive today. I don't believe that. I mean, Jesus would never, the hand of Jesus would never touch a gun. It's, it's, a, it's, it's an instrument of death. He came here to help mankind. It's not, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't doing harm. I just, uh, it's got to, we, we got to solve this problem. Oh, this is a postcard that I made for uh, Jasper Johns. Um, Jasper bought uh, a, a, a Cornell uh, box, uh, the, the Snow Owl box. It's probably, I'm, I'm going to go with Jasper on this one, that it's probably the best thing that uh, uh, Cornell ever did. Uh, Cornell was probably our America's greatest collage artist. He made art in a shoebox, so they told me in art school. And um, I saw this little postcard by Ellen H. Clapsaddle. That's Ellen uh, Hattie Clapsaddle. And when I heard the name Clapsaddle, I thought, is that a venereal disease? But it wasn't. It was, she was really a great postcard artist. She had a... She had a... Uh, uh, she was printing in Germany. She had a, a printing press. She was uh, larger and probably uh, uh, larger than Hallmark when she was doing what she was doing. But then the war broke out. They bombed the factories. She was cleaned out. Um, she had gone to Cooper Union when she started out. And she's one of America's great, great artists. And um, I saw this little postcard. And for some reason, it reminded me of, of Jasper, and so uh, I, I made a, just made a card out of it. Um, oh, this, this is my friend Marisol. Um, I was Marisol's last friend. Um, I was in and out of the studio all the time. I would find wood on the street, I would take it over and Marisol would say, oh, I can use this. And it wasn't long, it was in some piece that she had made and uh, we, we had a really good time together and uh, I, uh, she signed this postcard for me, which is called the Generals, which she was one of her sculptures that she made. And then she had also, she wanted me to have this postcard of the um, Hirohito, Emperor Hirohito and the Empress Nagasato. Um, this, I think he might've just passed away or something and Marisol did this, uh, an incredible piece for them. And the Japanese loved Marisol because the Japanese is a wood, wood culture and Marisol worked in wood. Um, she, uh, uh, she, she's uh, uh, my, my, my goddess, oh my God. And this, um, this, uh, this was a photograph that Marisol gave to me, which is, a, she had dinner with the Duchamps and uh, I kind of couldn't believe it, but she, she gave me, she wanted me to have this little photo that she had taken of Duchamp sitting there in this crazy hat with this, in this broke chair of his. Uh, and uh, I treasure this beyond treasures um, because she gave it to me. And uh, then this card is, uh, I, uh, Elaine de Kooning came down to the University of Pennsylvania where I, I was doing graduate uh, work in fine arts. And uh, Elaine sent me this Christmas card one time and she was a lot of fun. And uh, then one time 
I was working outside the Guggenheim and I saw Bill and I went up and started to talk to him. And he said, oh, I'm going down to see Elaine now. And so I, I knew where he was headed and uh, really nice guy, uh, really nice guy. Um, oh, and this, this is a postcard that I made for my, uh, my teacher uh, and mentor, uh, William King, who makes aluminum sculpture. And um, uh, I'm, I, I'm, I, I miss him. He, he's, uh, look him up. There's, you can Google William King uh, video at Smithsonian and you'll see him in his studio. I mean, it's like, wow, I wanna live like that. Um, when I spoke to Connie Fox, his wife, which that could be her right here in the gold, um, Connie said that Bill wasn't there, that he passed away, and uh, that he was gone, but his art lives on. And I was thinking, oh my God. I said, Connie, life is short, art is long. And she told me, Michael, don't ever forget it. And I was like, I. I, I won't. Uh, this was a, like at night, like Bill had trouble sleeping and like he would work, he'd, do, be, he'd go make art. And I put that little corn head uh, ceramic piece right there is something that he made. And I think he really liked it or something. So I put it with these other portraits, uh, these other sculpt, sculptors or sculptures. And oh, and this, this was just a, a crazy combination of, of Venuses that, that I put together. I just, the, the, the little girl, it has googly eyes. They, they bounce around. And uh, I just like that piece of sculpture. And this was my, uh, another teacher that I had at Penn, uh, Alex Katz. Alex turned me on to Pierre Redoute, who did a book of roses and a book of lilies. And wow, the lilies, you have to take a look. Um, and there's a whole story with Alex. I, the next time on that, he, he, he was really, I took him up, I did a painting at the Annenberg Center and when I was at the University of Pennsylvania and I took Alex up to the, to the Annenberg Center to look at the painting. And I said, Alex, they, they wanna buy the painting. And I said, he said, I said, what should I charge them? He said, $3,000. I guess, $3,000, are you insane? He said, I remember sold anything for more than $50. He goes, Tell them three thousand dollars, and I did, and they gave me the three thousand dollars, which was the price of admission. Um, oh, Alex, it was great, 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 great. Oh, and this, this is a postcard. Uh, this uh, Richard Anaskevich was a friend of Marisol's, and one day I was at a show of his, and he just passed away, I think, last year, and uh, I had him autograph a postcard for me. And uh, he, he did, he was very nice. And then this guy is uh, Nell Tala Tenz, who's a Romanian, who so he's an outsider artist. And he was out on the streets in New York selling his UFO paintings. And uh, I met, met him uh, through a friend of mine, uh, uh, Jan Patankin, who's a lawyer, who represented him for some reason. And, uh, but I was just thinking, you know, like, um, I guess you have to do what you have to do when it comes to art. Um, this is just a postcard that was very early that I made of New York City. This, this uh, postcard of the Sleeping Rainbows, I had done another card of ballerinas dancing on the Brooklyn Bridge. And that card was used uh, for an announcement for the opening of the South Street Seaport. And David Rockefeller and... Um, Brooke Astor were there. And I liked what Brooke Astor said about money. She said, money is like manure. It needs to be spread around. And I thought, wow, so true. Um, oh, and this is my friend, Edith uh, Weber, who um, I put Edith on the moon and uh, filled her uh, the uh, space with uh, with jewels because she was a jewel. Oh, and this is the Statue of Liberty. I was thinking, you know, like about the Statue of Liberty, what does she do on her day off? 
you know, like she must, uh, and she's standing up there. Oh, um, uh, this is a painting by, of, uh, it's called Odalesque by uh, Ang. Um, this is what she does on her day off, I guess. I, I, I don't know, I think about her as being a real person and also as being a symbol of a mother of exiles and mother of the homeless. I mean, and I love that line that of, of, of Emma uh, Lazarus, that last line, she says, I lift, my, I lift my lantern next to the golden door. The golden door is America. I mean, I was like, and she was like, it's, it's a figure of enlightenment. It's like, it's enlightened the world. It's like, we have a responsibility in this country. Oh, and this one, Rick loves this <laughs> um, postcard and so do I. This is um, called Muse Liberty. And she's standing there in their bare feet I, in a breeze. I, it's one of the most beautiful things I've ever done at, on a postcard. And uh, I just really can't stop looking at that for some reason. I don't know what it is. On the left is my best friend, Perry Steindell. And this piece is called Permanent Perry. I was trying to uh, do something. Um, with Perry. And the one on the right is, the, again, the Statue of Liberty. I was thinking maybe she had a boyfriend or she went out. Um, Perry and I were uh, students at the University of Pennsylvania in the graduate school of fine art. And uh, Perry, he says, were it not for Perry, I wouldn't be talking to you today. Uh, Perry's uh, and I started making postcards when he would come over and uh, we would just have fun playing, playing with postcards. And uh, we continued on all these years. And uh, oh, I, Perry, this is Perry. Perry does map drawings of imaginary cities. And uh, uh, this Perry Steindell is a is a pure artistic genius. Here is one. I just um, I love him more than God does. He is just my absolute a one best friend. I just uh, can never get enough of Perry. And then I sold this picture in a magazine and I cut it out and I thought it was kind of empty and I thought it needed some art or something. So I uh, superimposed Perry's drawings in the bathroom and I sent it to him and that little thing up there, that little white sheet up on the upper left-hand side, he said that it went with the, with the towels. <laughs> and uh, but I, I was thinking it, was, it needed some art or something in there. So I was like, ooh, there was nothing in there. And so I put Perry in there. These two cards were printed um, from 9-11. And that photograph on the left is, I actually, that's my own photograph. I actually took that photograph. And uh, Diane Altman, who runs postcardstop.com, uh, asked me to, if I would, uh, make her some cards or something, I don't know, or send her some cards. And so I, I sent her these two cards and she, she published them. Then this card um, is very recent. I did this card because of the pandemic. It's a pandemic postcard. Um, a friend of mine, Andy, died from COVID-19 very early. And so I made this for Andy. Oh, and this, this came a little bit later. This was, um, uh, the Rock of Ages, and uh, I just like the idea of hanging on, and that the Statue of Liberty, we're going to make it in this country. Um, then uh, I did this Greening of America, where I, uh, it's kind of something, and then this card um, was the World Trade Center lifting off. This was called Runaway Inflation, like back when I did this, there was 
inflation was rampant. And uh, then I did the, this is a close up of the uh, Broadway Boogie Woogie. And uh, the skirt again with the, the breeze. I just love the breeze. Um, I put the world, I put a beach on the World Trade Center. And there's Buzz Aldrin on the moon with a beach ball. I, the moon is so colorless. I was thinking we should brighten it up or have something up there that's uh, kind of colorful. Uh, this was a postcard I did. Uh, because of King Kong, I was thinking the World Trade Center should have like Siamese twin King Kongs. And so I made that, I put the names Nelson and David on it because I think they owned it or they had the, they funded the World Trade Center. And uh, again, I stripped the beach in there. And this is a Bruegel that I made with Tower of Babel and put them in there. Oh, and this card, this, I, I gave this card to uh, Paul and Lizette Georges and their painter, she, Paul Georges is a painter and they, they, they absolutely loved it. And uh, they were like my art parents. I mean, they, um, yeah, Paul brought his wife to the university when he came down as an art critic. And I was thinking, wow, what kind of man brings his wife with him? Uh, and I was so impressed with him and I was impressed with his paintings. And uh, he had a cat named Rembrandt. I mean, oh, and here's, this is the World Trade Center. I just doubled the World Trade Center because I missed the twin towers, the twins. Um, I just, you know. <laughs> Um, Perry might have given me that idea to do that because he's, he's uh, on a higher level than I am. And uh, this was actually a photograph that I'd taken and also had doubled, doubled them up again. This was a, um, just a monument of a book that um, it's called American Dream Book. I mean, I think you write your own dream in America or something. I don't know. It's just like, I, I like it. It's very simple. I like looking at it. It just wor it works for me. Um, the next slide, I'm not a political, I'm not into political art, but this card, but when the former president got in the White House, I felt that it really wasn't something not right about it. And uh, so I was thinking like, what went wrong here? Or it's, well, something's not right. So then later on, um, I did this postcard, um, which, was the end, I call it the end of the trail, which, you know, going from the White House to the outhouse is like, wow, that's like an American tragedy if I ever could think of one. When I was a kid, our family, we loved the Beverly Hillbillies. Like it was in the early 60s. I was very young and my brothers and sisters, we would look at the TV and with my uncle and my aunt and we would just roll around on the floor. And it just reminds me of the happiest times of my life. Um, but I was thinking, you know, there they go. They're happy to leave. It makes me happy that they're leaving. And it would make me happier if they never came back. This was a postcard of the, the, the Nelson Atkins Museum in, in Kansas. Uh, how Otterway, and Alan just had gone out there and uh, I had this postcard already made up and I, I just liked the idea of Rodin's thinker thinking about that mermaid down there. Also, I like this card, which is called moon uh, bathing. And it's like this woman is on like sunbathing on the moon and then this little um, perote is uh, on a moon, that little ceramic, piece. Um, I, I just love stuff like that. It makes me crazy. Um, oh, and this, this, this is, this, this uh, is an illustration for all of the postcard collectors because it's all about the chase. It's all summed up in this postcard. And um, I want to give a shout out to Brian Lunn, Mr. Robin Hood himself, in uh, Nottingham, England, because uh, he has a swan postcard collection. What I'm thinking, Brian, you don't have this one. Uh, 
maybe someday, who knows. Oh, and this is, this is my Happy Mother's Day card. I made a postcard of my mother and I sent this to her uh, because it makes me extremely happy and uh, that face melts my heart. Um, then I had a, car, a crazy card with pearls, uh, stringing pearls over the surface of the moon. It's like, you know, just some idea. Here was a large baseball um, on the moon. Uh, I, I've done a, a considerable amount of baseball cards. Oh, and this card here is, um, this uh, on the left is Brancouche, his bird in space. And this is Buzz Aldrin stopping to appreciate art or a piece of sculpture. And the one on the left is, this is a postcard of me kissing the love of my life, Rochelle Cavalli. And I put some uh, forget-me-nots in here. And this year I, um, I gave Rochelle for her birthday a puppy. We, we named her Lulu and she's the cream puff of my eye. Um, and Lulu sends everyone puppy kisses. And the last card I have tonight is the end of the trail. End of the trail. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Those are interesting cards. So, uh, anybody have any questions? Just unmute yourself so you can ask a question. Nobody has any questions. That's good. Hey, Michael, this is Mark. Mark. Yes. So, I do a lot of YouTube videos <clears throat> about different types of cards. And one of the ones I've been researching is called Art is Signed. Now, I'm not, I, and I'm not one that uh, sit, uh, seeks out artist signed cards at the moment, but I came up against a conundrum where some, some research I did, some people say artist signed cards are ones that are actually signed by the artist right. and ones that without it, some people say those are artist signed cards. What's your take? Oh, that, that's a tough one. I, um, so they're, they're basically illustrations of, uh, Ellen Clapsaddle signed her cards. Um, Bertillier signed his cards. It, it, it all depends on the illustrator and who does what. Um, but I, I consider any handmade postcard an artist postcard. If mm -hmm. it's, you know, somebody paints it or if it's drawn or if it's just illustrated somehow uh, that's, that, that an artist made that or an illustrator or a graphic designer. It could be uh, a, you know, graphic designer. Yeah, I'm putting I'm putting it together, and I, I see that. I'm, I'm scared. Should I put myself out on this one yet? <laughs> it's like it's like what some people say: the front of the back or back of a postcard. There's always that. Right. And then also, is it is it postcard one word or two words? Right? Yeah. Uh, but I, I appreciate your postcards. What it kind of gives me, what you went through, is I'm in your head, looking out your eyes how you see things. Right. And I would never see things the way that you would have done. But once you brought it out, I said, oh yeah, he's got it. Right. I, yeah. I, I don't know. I get these ideas and then I try to carry them out on a small format of the, of, of the postcard. And, uh, and as you were going through them, I'm a, a big eBay seller. So I tried to bring up some of your postcards on eBay. I can't find them. And usually when I can't find the postcard, that means they're really popular and people are hanging on to them. Right. Yeah, I, um, I, the whole time I've been going to the, the, for the whole time I've been a member of the Metropolitan Postcard, I've always looked for my cards and I, I, I've never, only one time uh, did I find one. And then, um, uh, Barbara Booz uh, gave me one of my, uh, uh, well, she actually gave me the one with the sash and then later on the last time I saw her she found the swimmer of liberty and the wiggle picture and I bought both of them from her uh, 
because I don't have any. I mean, I, it's, you know, you have to, it's whether you hang on to it, but that, that wiggle picture is extremely rare to find that. Um, uh, I, uh, I sent all the ones I have out and I only have a few myself and I, I have, uh, when I buy lots of postcards at the state sales and stuff, I've had a few people, um, one guy, it was a duck at Long Island, little kid with ducks. And he said, where did you get that postcard? That's me. That was a 1950s postcard. I said, I got about, I got about six of them. I said, do you want them? He said, yeah, I'll buy them. I said, no, give me your address. I'm going to send them to you. Oh, well. And uh, then another person said, that's my mom's house. The address on the back of that postcard. Where did you get <laughs> And I said, how did you look on the, out of 20,000 cards? How did you find this card? And I sent it to him. So I don't know if I was scammed, but he had a pretty convincing story. I don't, I don't, I don't think so. No. Um, but I really appreciate uh, being here, Michael and Michael. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you for Mark. Hey. Okay. Neat to see. May I have a question? Debbie, sure. Yeah. Um, how many postcards do you make of your images came in late sorry i came in late so if you say so, i'm sorry i don't know but i just was wondering how many do you make oh, of it, one image of one image it all depends on uh, on the publisher um i i really don't know how many that there there some of those are limited runs and they don't they don't print that many um it's, it's not a you know it's not a vast uh volume of them because they were never uh they never were really you know commercially done or successful i don't think uh you know in terms of for somebody actually buying something or you know no, no, just uh, it was limited limited it wasn't uh you know a couple thousand uh very interesting but, thank you for oh listen you're welcome thank you hi michael um, it's Susan. Uh, Susan. I, I, I thought I had all of your postcards because I'm an avid collector of your work. And it turns out that you know a lot more about how many cards you produce than I do because I don't have half of them. Um, and we've traded cards in the past. I don't remember if I got a booklet or you got the booklet, but we traded cards. So uh, you've helped me improve my collection, but I'm going to have to Hunt you down for some more, okay? They printed, Susan, they printed, uh, uh, Dover printed, the, 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 this Fantasy Surreal postcard book was printed as a book and then uh, as a tear-up book of 24 cards. And then they printed single cards for in the rack. And so mm -hmm. I have no idea like, you know, the tens oh. of thousands of those because they went uh, to all the different countries in that. Um, I. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, but I'm sure there was a record of it at Dover or something. But you, you can't even get that fantasy surreal postcard book. I think uh, it's, you know, it's kind of expensive. And, and so is the wiggle picture. To, when you see that on eBay, it's going to be shot. Yeah, that wiggle picture presented a problem for me because I, at one point, I didn't know whether to put it in with my New York City cards or with my Michael Langenstein cards. So I'm going to probably need a second card, one for each place. You're right. <laughs> right. So, so me too. We we'll just put it in novelty. It's a novelty, isn't it? Yes. It's, a it's, a, it's very thick and cumbersome or something. I think it goes into novelty. But okay. it, New York City's good. Thank you. You're welcome. See you uh, soon. See you Sunday. Sunday. Michael. Michael. Yes. Hi, Sterling Kincaid from Wichita. Hi, Hal. Hi. There. Hey, uh, question for you. Or do you figure yourself in the pop genre art? Or I'm, I'm thinking of that Coke can oh. illustration. You're not a, of course, you kind of copied maybe the Andy Warhol type theme with the Campbell can. Oh, I didn't Campbell think soup, but yeah, no, I didn't think of that. I was um, it, that double can reminded me of uh, uh, Jasper Johns's. I mean, I, when I looked at it, I was thinking Jasper Johns did a 
a Ballantine beer uh, sculpture. It's two <clears throat> Ballantine uh, beer cans. Uh, I think uh, him and Leo, Leo Caselli was the number one art dealer. And Marisol actually showed with Leo and said that he was very generous. And uh, <clears throat> uh, Leo actually had a dog, its name was Noodles. And um, I, uh, those cans are actually loose in, in uh, the sculpture that, uh, uh, that Jasper did of those beer cans. Um, I think Leo said, you know, you could, you could make art out of beer cans or something. And then he went and did it. Or, um, but uh, I, it's really fantasy and surreal. It's not, uh, you know, I don't think it was pop art. It could probably fit in pop art. Marisol's a, a pop artist, but she's really, you know, they said, oh, well, she does folk art and it's like, but she, she's really in there with, uh, you know, with uh, in, in that category, kind of. I hate to put labels on things because it just doesn't, it, she, she doesn't really fit in there. Um, and it was through my friend Alice that I, I got, Alice told me that, that uh, Marisol was a real artist. And then I thought, well, I got to go hang, hang out with, with Marisol. And I was very fortunate that to have my time with her and uh, uh, she, she was really, really, uh, she was very shy. She just, she wouldn't, she didn't talk. She just, she was very like, um, I don't know, very, very artistic, that one. It's another really, just, uh, someone to, to look up to, she was just so fabulous. But uh, I don't know where you put those postcards, so just send them out. Any other questions? I did yeah. find some of your cards on eBay. Oh, did you? Oh, great! Including the book with the with the with the the book of the postcards, the cut oh, out. The, the fantasy is real. Yeah. How much? I just ordered it. I just ordered it. No, you're kidding. Yep. Wow. I found it on there. So yeah, I'm, have one I'm, it's, yeah, I've been making cards for so long. It's just like, and, and so many, I, it's like, it's hard to think of all this stuff, but I tried to organize this and kind of. So Michael, this is Mark again. I got another question for you. Okay. So as being an artist and you created these postcards and they published them and now you see them on eBay, what are your thoughts as a creator and an artist? Oh, oh, I don't know. It's um, humble. <laughs> yeah, I just you know, it, yeah, it's. Uh, it, I just uh, it, it's rewarding in a way because when I did the fantasy and surreal book, um, that little four by six space, I actually it's my space. So I, I, I really, uh, it was just. Uh, like a sense of accomplishment um, that, you know, they feel they actually had done something. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, just, uh, it's your, they're your babies, you know, you see them here and there. Um, so when, when I see postcards also, you know, some of them are staged like Silver Springs or Cypress Garden ones with the girls. How long does it take for a person to actually sit down and make a postcard? Ugh. Hours, days, weeks. Yeah, it, it varies. Sometimes it happens very fast, and it, sometimes it takes a long time. Uh, you know that one of the, the the White House sinking. I thought about that for a long time, and it mm -hmm. just wouldn't go away in my head. And uh, I uh, I really like deep, uh, Detroit publishing postcards because they're actually little works of art. They're printed mm -hmm. on a litho stone in four colors and. Uh, with a, they used the glass negative and uh, they were uh, the Tiffany of postcards in their day. When a postcard was penny, you had to pay two cents for those things. And they had a, a showroom up on Fifth Avenue. Um, <clears throat> and <clears throat> when I got to, you know, playing around with the White House, I, I, I chose that particular Detroit card because it was the nicest one. 
Okay. And I could get away with a lot, you know, like playing with it, you know, that it looked like, oh, hey, that thing is really sinking. Um, but, um, I don't know. You, you have to find the pictures for things. I mean, it, it, takes, it takes a while. It's, real, it's a real effort. I mean, you, you know, you look at it, and it's, it seems like nothing. But when you stop to think how that actually got to where it is or came into existence, uh, it, it, it takes some doing. It's, just, it's not easy. I mean, I, you know, it's like the, the Olympics or something. It, they, mm. These people will make this stuff look, look easy. And it's like, it's not. It, one, one time when I was, uh, I was in that artist and writers uh, show on baseball, the first show was in Albany and um, they had Tom Seaver come up and Tom uh, offered anyone who wanted to come to the back of the museum, there was a baseball field. And he said, you know, come out and, you know, and uh, bat against me. And I was like, oh boy. <laughs> so uh, I was like, uh, yeah, Tom. So I went out there and uh, I thought, well, if I could just get a piece of it, if I just hit it, I'll be happy. If I could just nick the ball, what, you know? And so Tom said, Michael, when I throw the thing, I'll tell you when to swing. He threw the ball. I didn't even see that ball. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I didn't even see it. I, you know, I said, you know, could you slow it down a little, <laughs> a little bit? And uh, he threw it again, did not see that ball again. And I was like, oh my God. Uh, and then later on, I was talking to him. I said, Tom, like, how do you do it? He said, oh, he said, what it is, is I see a little 16 inch box where you're standing. And all I'm doing is trying to put that ball through that box, that frame. And I was like, really, that's it? <laughs> I was like, it was, mm. but I mean, it seems easy, but like, you're not going to bat against, you know, Tom Seaver and think you're going to hit the ball. I mean, it's like, boy, mm. that guy's naive. I mean, good luck with that. He's a professional. You can't, can't compete with that. Well, thank you for answering all my questions. Oh, you're welcome. Do you have a favorite? One of your cars that, that for whatever reason, is I, a favorite of yours? I'm with, with Rick on this, on that, that Muse Liberty. Oh, and then yeah. also, and also the 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 little putties, uh, the misguided love is one of my favorite ones. Um, I just uh, uh, I don't know. I I see cars like that, and I wish I had thought of it. And then when I look at it, I thought, wait a minute, I did think of that. <laughs> and and I'm like, oh, hey, that's uh, that's really good. Um, yeah, those those are probably the two that I really like. You haven't done any any postcards with Hal in them, have you yet? Uh, n not yet, but I'm working on it. Okay. <laughs> and uh, and Alan are up next. It's going to be called the Wichita Boys. There you go. <laughs> any other questions, Rick? You haven't had asked any questions. Thanks for being here, Michael, and oh, Hal, for explaining and showing. And I love the diversity of it. And uh, you know, some of them look like they may have been invitations to events or to uh, gallery openings. And I've long thought of that as being a niche to collect. Right. We used to live in Taos, New Mexico, and I would go up and down the street looking at art in the galleries and always would pick up uh, artist cards Right, right. Uh, that they may have, you know, close to the checkout desk, and yeah, they're you know, they're yeah, they are. They're they can be uh, just really wonderful, yeah. But it's a cheap way, or it can be an inexpensive way. We we won't say cheap, but an inexpensive way for somebody to appreciate and somebody to collect and right. to you know add to a collection and learn along the way learn about the artists, learn what they're doing, their different uh, periods of, of creativity and everything. I think it's great. I like when I, how, when I was with uh, uh, Donald R. Brown down at the, uh, yeah. the two? Myerstown. In Myerstown, we would go out to lunch and like it, with, the, with the tip, 
he would always give the waitress a postcard. And I was like, oh my God. I mean, it was like, I, they were cards that I guess he didn't want anymore, but it was a way of getting them out there. Sure. And it's just one of those things I'll never forget. Sure. You know, it's like, here's your tip and here's a postcard for you. That's right. That's right. And it'd be the International uh, Museum or something. He has the title and everything. It's very neat. Yeah. But great. Now, I wish you guys could get him to, 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 uh, to do to do a talk because well i think he's starting to do uh, email and things like right. that so yeah. he must have a computer well no he's he's a cell phone or something that he's got connected up he does have a computer uh but he's like 91 now and uh he's uh time is ticking well, yeah he yeah, got time is ticking he's <laughs> you know he's he he's a he's approachable and excuse me and you can get him sure well you're you're wonderful and uh, glad to have been able to see all of this tonight. Thank you. You, you know, yeah. I haven't shown my cards in a long time, and I just thought, you know, like, yeah. you know, to do this, would, you know, would be, you know, an ideal way to share some images. Right. And, uh, yeah. if people enjoy, you know, visual entertainment. You know, it's like, um, you know. But you know, you're one of the first that I can remember thinking about who has created postcards, but yet we can't really collect them. I can't go to a favorite dealer and see, you know, a section. Right. Susan talks about collecting maybe 20 or 30. I don't know how many well, she has, but yeah, you know when I fine. Yeah, when I, or they, here in New York, they had that place called Untitled Postcards. You could go there and buy postcards. Wow. That was back when I did the, uh, uh, that postcard of the hot dog disturbing the peace and i took it up to the uh, that was the title disturbing the peace i took it up to the uh to the guy at the uh at untitled and i had a you know had you know a couple boxes of them or whatever i took up like a, about half a, a shoe box of them up and thinking that he would buy them just put them in the store wouldn't touch it really no would not touch it and i was like are you kidding me and he was like nope Nope, don't want it. And it wasn't like, I mean, I didn't, I mean, I was like, I wasn't charging him anything for him. Yeah, yeah. Um, but look, you, you, you never know. You never, it's like, you didn't, can't, you just do what you do, you know, like, right. go with it. Well, it's been fun. Thank you. Any other questions? Michael, thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you everybody else, for, for being here. Thank you, Mark, and uh, we'll see uh, we'll see everybody back uh, August second with uh, with Mark Jones' presentation. And get your questions ready. I'm ready to answer if I can. <laughs> <laughs> and if you got any questions about buying anything on eBay or how it works, uh, you can uh, have them that day, or just go to YouTube or whatever and send an email, and I can try to help you out with that. A lot of people struggle with it, but it's pretty straightforward. So. I have nothing else to do except collect postcards. I love it. Wow. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, guys. And uh, it's been great. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you very much. Right. Bye, Mikey. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Bye, Bye, Mikey. <laughs> see you. She enjoyed yeah. this. This was something yes. good for her to see. Oh, great. This is her first soup. Wow, well, Mike, really? Michael. Do, yeah, to do see something done like that. Wow. Yeah. So tell uh, Rochelle the cakes in the mail. I will tell her that. <laughs> we got and it. We, we got it by mistake. Uh oh. Oh, wow. oh okay. Couldn't find and Lulu. Never seen. And it. we're gonna sign off. So oh, thanks, night. Night. love you. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Night, Michael, night. as long as you're asking, my favorite card. One I hadn't seen before was you kissing Rochelle. Oh, you only like that because it's French. <laughs> no, because I like her too. <laughs> Good night. Bye bye. Bye. Sunday. <laughs>